are live. Good morning. It is a lovely Thursday, just days away from the start of the Penn State football season. I'm Thomas Frank Carr. This is the BWI Live Recruiting Show. Sean Fitz and Ryan Snyder with me to break down. Well, today we're just talking about some guys. 2025 is here already. Recruiting for 2025 is off and running. Penn State already has commits in the class, and we are going to preview class as a whole. 2024, we're just waiting for some final things to fall into place over the next several months. So, by popular demand, we are taking a look, a preview at the next class. The important names to know, can Penn State get over the hump at quarterback, receiver, running back, offensive line, all these different places that Penn State wants to continue recruiting well or find a rebound. And these are the guys that are going to get that information for you. Uh, Fitz and Ryan are the two best guys that you can find in Penn State football recruiting. Guys, uh, good morning. And uh, give me your, your best hot take for 2025 to start our show today. Uh, Fitz, going to you first. Hot take? Yeah. Far too early to be talking 2025s. No. <laughs> yeah. um, well, it's interesting because what? you look at evaluations and, and continue to tune in uh, for the rest of the show if, if you didn't make it past that. Uh, <laughs> the evaluations are so far ongoing. Like this is a group that has not yet started its junior year. Junior year, the most important season for a high school player in terms of film, even though that's, you know, it, it, everything has gotten so sped up. You know, you got guys offered as eighth graders, ninth graders now, but the junior season is kind of the hallmark and that's where it all hinges for these guys. So we saw a bunch of guys in camp. We've seen a bunch of guys that visited in the spring and summer, but like we went through it with the, with the lash bash, there were guys that visited for the 2022 edition of the lash bash that we thought we're going to maybe end up in Penn state's class, maybe be one of those guys. And they're just so, so far off the radar. So yes, evaluations start early and th that's great, but this is going to be something like you're going to look back on this show in a year and be like, Oh, I remember that guy. Like I remember Sean battle and yeah. Antonio, Antonio trip. And those guys from, you know, past classes where we're talking about potential early commits. And then all of a sudden they're not even on the radar. So I think that that's, that's important to remember as we talk 2025, but pretty talented uh, in this region right now, uh, just looking forward jerseys back. Maryland seems to be, up again so there's there's opportunity for penn, uh, penn state to strike in its in its common areas and i think that it's exciting ryan give me something your best hot take that i can clip for social and put out so that everyone can see exactly what you think about 2025 give me something blazing hot to start the show yeah <laughs> wrong class you notice, that that's not tonight. what we do here <laughs> uh you love these you love putting us on the spot. Um, I mean, what one thing I would say is like Sean's comparing it to like looking at lash bashes, right? And and you know, we there was what 20 or so guys here, you know, all of whom look like they're gonna be guys that we're talking about for a long time. But if you go back to that 2022 lash bash, I mean, think about some of these names here. Jordan Lyle was a guy who who came to that. You had Keelan Adams, you had Dewan Williams running back from St. Francis. I mean, uh, Emmanuel Ross, who goes on to Stanford. Like, there's a lot of guys who were here two years ago, who really Penn State never was really even in the mix with. So just kind of supporting what Sean's saying there. It is all, I don't want to say all about junior film. It's definitely, that's not the case for everything. But man, there are, you know, what, Penn State's offered almost 200 guys in this class. and Almost half of them will fall off. Uh, and then and there are going to be a ton of other offers that that come in. And then out of those, you know, 100 or so guys that do kind of stay in the mix, you're going to see 50 of them who right now you maybe you're not even talking about that are going to emerge here uh, in the weeks and months ahead. So I don't have a hot take for you, T-Frank. <laughs> We're going to do our best to kind of – uh, lay the land of, of where 25 is right now, but we're going to do this again, probably in November, December, January, and uh, a ton of names. There's gonna be a ton of new names that we discussed then. And that's why you guys are the best because there are no hot takes. There's just information and uh, <laughs> rational approach to all of this stuff. Uh, so just as a warning, I was seeing the dreaded uh, Wi-Fi bubble up at the top of my screen. So hopefully everything I'm saying is coming through clear. If not, We'll get through it together, uh, despite the fact that I have my computer plugged in directly into the modem and should never happen. Sometimes that happens here with our connection. So looks like everyone is on board. So great. Let's get to our show sponsor today. And that is my perfect franchise. Andy Ludicky has been with us for over a year now, uh, and a lot of Blue White Illustrated message board members have gone through the process of learning if they are ready to take that next step and uh, and own their own franchise. You can check him out, 404-973-9901 is his phone number to get in contact with him. Or if you've been here before for the show, Andy at MyPerfectFranchise.net. Um, and what he does, for those of you that don't know, 
new people watching the show. Thanks for being here. Throw us a, uh, a, a like on the show. Subscribe to the, the video and, and the YouTube channel if you're here and you're new. Um, if you're ready to leave the corporate rat race for the American dream, Andy can help you do that. If you're looking for maybe a side hustle while you're working your current job to earn some extra income, maybe you're getting out of debt and you want to be able to put yourself in a better financial situation. If you have any of these things, you want to diversify, build wealth, anything, check out my perfect franchise, Andy Ludicky. He's a franchise consultant, and I, I make the joke, he's he gets high on his own supply. This is a man who owns his own franchises, so he's been through the process, he's made the mistakes, and he knows how to help you. He, uh, uh, we talked to him recently and pretty cool that one of our message board members about to buy his own franchise here. Um, and hopefully we'll have some more details on that in the next couple, uh, couple of days. It's still kind of in that finalizing process. So very secret hush hush, but he could tell us that somebody from blue white illustrated has taken the plunge and has, uh, decided to go in on a franchise. Some things that he's told us, if you're considering this. Uh, just because there's a bit of a mini recession, which hasn't gone full-blown recession from what I can tell. People are not selling their homes, though. That is one area that things are not going as well in the uh, industry and in, in the economy as normal. But that means people are staying in their homes. So home services are very hot right now. So if you have any expertise in that area, you can call Andy and he can give you a, a rundown of things that he sees in, that, are, that are very good and promising right now for you to buy into as a... Uh, as a franchise, but the main thing is he's not going to push you into something you don't know anything about or you're not prepared for. So check him out, myperfectfranchise.net. Um, and we have here in the comments, Steven says, Ryan, that bird dog hat looked pretty good. Um, now, for the last month, two months, I've been telling you all about bird dogs and my journey in the bird dogs, but I'm going to take a back seat to you guys today because you're much more normal individuals than I am. Uh, Fitz. <coughs> How has your journey with bird dogs been, and where have you been wearing your bird dogs uh, so far since you've had them? Because I know you've had them a little bit longer than Ryan. Yeah, everywhere. Just, I mean, I went to the lake this weekend. I wore the uh, the gym shorts there, um, and I wore them to swim. You know, it's just any anywhere that I could take them, I took them off, or I took them with me. Sorry, I didn't take them off. <laughs> um, but no, they've been awesome. I love them. Um, and like I said, I'm looking into getting more. And uh, the the liner is is really a game changer. And I don't need to go into details about my uh, you know, undergarment preference, but like, it's awesome. I like that. So, um, yeah, that's my, that's my bird dog story. I'm sticking to it. I got my Tumblr here as well. Thanks to all that, uh, you know, participated in that, in that giveaway. But yeah, we, we appreciate bird dogs around here for more than just the sponsorship. Yeah. There, um, I, this shirt I pulled out of the laundry cause I wanted to wear it again today because it just makes me look so good. We were at Eagles training camp and it was 91 degrees and it was, Oh, come on Fitz. You know, I look good. Uh, it was 91 degrees. It was super sweaty, and I was cool, calm, and collected the entire time because I was in my bird dogs. Ryan, the hat, that is, you're, you're perfect here because when you use promo code BWI, you get a free tech hat, the one he's wearing with your purchase. So uh, when did you get your bird dogs? Right before I went to the beach, and it was wonderful. So probably wore more than I should have down there, honestly, after uh, being there for a week. And uh, we do have a laundry machine, fortunately there but uh i love them i'm wearing them right now but i'm not going to stand up and do all the things that t frank does in that video <laughs> but uh no nah, they're excellent guys they're, they're kind of a game changer i just actually took up the promo code the other day and offered uh, or ordered two more so uh, definitely a fan guys like I mean, we've had a lot of sponsors on the show and and man as far as I mean, obviously we love them all right love rogue shock love andy but uh man these these ones have been as far as me getting a supply and me really realizing what it is uh, a game changer. I, I got four shorts now. Probably going to have six or seven more here in uh, in the weeks and months ahead. Yeah, I gotta I gotta update uh, my wardrobe as well because I I I am in the same situation that you guys are where I run out of them because I wear them too much. Uh, so we're we're also consumers here of Bird Dogs. Thanks to them for being a sponsor of the show. Uh, they're going to be with us for a while now, so I'm very excited about that. We'll be telling you more about them as the seasons change and our wardrobe changes. Uh, as we get into the Penn State football season. But we do have some 2024 news here to get to to start the show. And apparently I'm doing that today. Uh, Jay, it's because we're getting into Jalen Harvey. And really, like, we're tiptoeing into the conversation of Jalen Harvey. He announced his uh, top three. Supposed to be sometime in August, but as of yet, I've seen no no new updates here. Right, Fitz? It actually came through on Friday evening. Um, it was supposed to be Friday afternoon. It came through Friday evening. USC, Maryland, Penn State, 
pretty much as expected. You know, this is kind of the, those are kind of the three schools that we honed in on. I know we also visited uh, Florida and Tennessee was in the mix as well. They were a top five in July. So we cut it down to three. Uh, again, I, th I think he's going to decide before the season. I think he wants to get it out of the way. The issue um, has been that, you know, he's been close before and he's been, you know, at that line or across that line before and and it, it's been pulled back and that's kind of i don't want to say worrisome like i think this is a recruitment that goes all the way to december regardless of what he decides in august so um but penn state's still pushing there um you know it's a it's it's a marathon and there's really not much you can say about that other than it's a marathon um they really really good player like really good player and i think that that's been clouded by the way that he has seemingly handled the process you know it hasn't been a situation where he's been out you know saying words and things like that, but it's just the way that it's, it's drug on, especially from a Penn state perspective when you're out in front and it seems like you're out in front for multiple reasons, but you've seen like you've been out in front for a long, long time. It's just like, why hasn't it happened yet? And, and yeah. we, we've seen this and it does, you know, it does turn back sometimes and, you know, uh, he, he has elsewhere, but we could have said the same thing with Liam Andrews this summer, you know, it it seemed like it was like Penn state was out in front, but you know, are you looking for something else? I don't know that, this situation is, you know, those are parallels, but you know, there are situations where Penn state is the, is the far and away leader and it drags on, drags on, drags on. And then he eventually commits to Penn state. So that's still on the table right now. I do think mm -hmm. USC is a threat. Uh, their NIL game strong. Uh, obviously um, they've gotten some guys from the Northeast that, you know, they, they've gone over a lot of air miles to, to secure those guys. And they, they want Harvey right now. They'll take Harvey right now. Maryland, of course, with Mike Loxley, with those hometown kids, he's got a pool there, man. I know people don't like Mike, Mike Loxley that are listening to this podcast, but there is certainly a pool there. Um, very interesting to me that Chop Robinson would go the direction that Chop Robinson went over the last couple of years out of Quince Orchard to Maryland right. to Penn State. And then, you know, Jalen Harvey's kind of following in his footsteps, but also not following in those footsteps. So I think that that's very interesting. Um, you know, like I said, Penn State still wants him. That's that's the important thing here. Uh, very good edge rusher. He's going to play with Xavier Gilliam this year at Quince Orchard. So that's uh, something to, to keep in mind. But uh, I think over the next couple of weeks, probably a little bit more clarity in that. But he came out last week, announced the top three. Uh, it wasn't any earth shattering movement. Uh, you know, we identified it pretty quickly after he put that tweet out last week that it wasn't going to be a decision. And we talked about it on the show last week. Um, yeah. But Penn State still wants them. They want uh, Harvey in this class, and 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 they're still going to push for him. So uh, some stuff going on in the chat. We'll leave it in the chat. But uh, I just want to follow up with you in terms of uh, I think there is some fatigue about Jalen Harvey. And uh, if you want the full story, by the way, if you want to get the the context, we're not really going to get into you know in detail here. BlueWhiteIllustrated.com. Great time to sign up with the season in front of us. All the promos, uh, you missed them in August, so if you want to sign up now, you're, you're paying full freight, but it is, well, even then, well worth your money, either monthly or uh, by the year subscription, to get in and get that premium access. But Fitz, I just want to follow up with you uh, after that preamble of, there's, there's more than meets the eye, and there's more than the public perception in recruiting a lot of times when we have these situations. Is, is that fair to say with Jalen? Of course. I mean, this is a kid making the biggest decision of his life and some guys just aren't ready. Like I was not close to like having the information and the opportunities at hand when I was a 17 year old high school student. I mean, that's kind of what we're, where we're at here. That's something we lose focus in because these guys have been on the radar for so long in the public eye, in the public sphere. So I think that that's something to remember with all these kids is that they're, they're kids, you know, and, and it's, and it's obviously there's, there's an expectation given what's out there and, you know, how big recruiting, how big of a business recruiting has been, not just for, for us, but for the players as well. Um, and that's, that's an opportunity that they would be doing themselves a disservice to. I mean, we talk about early commits sometimes as in, you know, guys that jump on board way too early. I mean, that, that's arguably in my eyes worse than, you know, dragging it on a, a couple months too long. So right. when you follow this stuff day to day, yes, there's fatigue. It gets tiring to do, but it, it is at the end of the day, his decision. And you got to respect that. Uh, Ryan, coming to you, another top five, another cut down of list of player uh, school fits. Don't know what that sentence was supposed to be, but uh, Ryan Montgomery is where we're getting to uh, released a top five earlier this week. You wrote about that blue white uh, Tell us what you want to about that particular situation with the quarterback, the four-star quarterback from Ohio. Yeah. I, you know, honestly, it kind of surprised me a little bit that Penn state was in his top five, just from the perspective of, I expected Purdue to be there. And then what do we learn? Purdue gets a, a quarterback commit from a 2025 player. So that's kind of makes sense. I mean, Right now, when I look at those schools, 
you know, I certainly kind of think like South Carolina, maybe Florida, that some of the newer schools that have offered him are, are ones to potentially watch there. I, I, I want to see if he visits. That, that's the big thing. Is he going to make it out here? Um, and, 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 and how does that recruitment progress? I mean, Daniel Bryan's been in touch with him pretty regularly. You know, Mike Yurchis has never been the uh, – James Franklin kind of recruiter, right? Very aggressive, out, outgoing. You know, you're just, don't get me wrong, he recruits. But he hasn't been in contact with Montgomery as much as I kind of expected him to be if Montgomery yeah. is going to be, you know, what I would consider the Malik Washington level. I, we're going to get into this all here in a little bit. But to me, um, keep an, I mean, Michigan too, of course. I left Michigan out there. But, I mean, Michigan, Florida, South Carolina, you know, Georgia was in there as well. Uh, but with those newer offers, South Carolina, Florida, they intrigue me. And then, you know, he's been to Michigan, what, nine times so far? So uh, it would be very interesting to me if Luke Montgomery, his brother, plays for Ohio State and Ryan ultimately uh, ends up at Michigan. So we'll, we'll keep an eye on that. Doesn't seem to be in a rush to make a commitment. Uh, we'll, we'll see how things progress there. But if Penn State's going to be a player here, uh, Ryan Montgomery, I would expect him to visit somewhat kind of soon. Uh, but to me, it just kind of feels like the ball's more in Penn State's court than, than anything else. Yeah, uh, Ron puts Ohio State in here. Uh, he didn't have Ohio State in his top five. Were you surprised by that? Well, that's because they have a quarterback commit uh, and Tavian St. Clair, yeah. uh, another Ohio guy. I mean, we we thought, I mean, for the longest time, we thought, yeah, he'll probably end up at the Buckeyes with his brother. And then, um, you know, uh, Ryan Day ends up taking the uh, the other Ohio native quarterback who's, who's, a, who's a pretty good player in himself. So, uh, yeah, just an interesting recruitment, man. A, a guy that honestly, I kind of wrote off for a little while. I still think there's interest in, in there, but man, when I, when I look at this quarterback war, which we're about to get into, um, I still think there's kind of one guy, and then and then everybody else at the moment. Fitz, you got some? Yeah, eight of ten, or excuse me, eight of twenty. Uh, the top twenty quarterbacks in the class of 2025 already committed, which is pretty crazy when you think about how quarterback recruiting goes with the the dominoes that we call it usually comes later in the year um, or later in the junior season into uh, next spring so I think the quarterback a little bit ahead of the curve of what it usually is in terms of commitment so you know I don't I, I don't know Ohio State recruiting in the sense that are they gonna would they take a second guy um, but like that's a spot that's filled there are Clemson's filled you know there's there are a bunch of schools like big schools that have quarterbacks right now. So I think that that'll be interesting in terms of what you set up for the dominoes. And then, of course, as I said earlier, these evaluations are ongoing. Like we did not. I mean, Ryan and I saw Ethan Grunkmeyer at camp when he was a sophomore. You didn't think that guy was going to be what he is today. You know, this yeah. is something that there's a lot of development left for these guys. So you're not rushing into quarterback uh, recruiting in 2025 unless there's like, you know, Bryce Underwood wants to jump on board. Hell yeah take Bryce Underwood you know that's that's kind of how you have to approach that but everyone else you're going to dissect and what we saw with this past cycle and what we've seen in other past cycles is you know guys are still developing and some guys are going to flatten out and some guys are going to keep going up and that that sometimes goes into the spring evaluation period for the, for next year so it'd be very interesting how Penn State follows this I, I know they've got some good targets early but sometimes the first targets aren't the best targets and we, we yeah. saw that in this cycle yeah, and uh, by the way, coming up later today, if you're watching live at BlueWhiteIllustrated.com, I broke down uh, Ryan Montgomery's highlight film. Not the full film, just kind of the, the initial pass of what do we see here from him as a player off his sophomore film. That's coming out if you're watching live uh, later today. But also, if you're watching this on replay, uh, you know, we got that coming up right now. You can watch it. You can go and check that out at any time. What's up? And, and, and T. Frank, regarding Danny O'Brien, or excuse me, regarding uh, <laughs> Ryan Montgomery and Penn State, Danny O'Brien, absolutely huge. Like this is that's the reason he's on the list. Danny O'Brien and Brad Mandler. Those are the two reasons that, that Penn State made that list. And I agree with Ryan. I think Penn State's got a lot of work to do if they want Montgomery to be his their quarterback in the uh, in the 2025 class. But at the same time, they've got those two things going for for, for them uh, in this recruitment. I'm really glad that uh, we have settled that his name is Ryan Montgomery because I kept calling him Ryan Finley, who was the NC State quarterback a couple years ago because he plays at Finley High School. Um, and uh, it's <laughs> Ryan Montgomery. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, uh, we got a couple things here in the chat I need to get to before we get uh, to our main topic today. Doug said his wife just yelled at him to get some new clothes. Uh, even though he works from home like me and like you guys, and he's not on camera, he's still going to try Bird Dog. So, again, use that promo code BWI and you get yourself a free hat, Doug. Uh, Doug there with the Stanley Cup, which is pretty dope. 
And then we've got Mike, who's here in the chat, regular here on the show. One of our converts here from the YouTube channel. He says, I'm a member, and it's worth it. So check out bluewhiteillustrated.com. Sign up for that yearly membership because it's the better deal. And uh, even at full price, you were, it's, it's one of the best deals in football where you get so much information, so much premium content from these guys, from Nate Bauer, from, uh, from Greg Pickle, and from myself. So now... Let's talk about some football players. 2025, we've touched on a couple of them. We're going to start at quarterback. We mentioned Ryan Montgomery. Who are the other guys that Penn State is vying for and is interested in to uh, add to this class and to add to their list growing of potential franchise quarterbacks now that they, it feels like and it seems like they've got the ball rolling with Drew Aller and Ethan Grunkmeyer and the guys that they've committed so far under Mike Yersich. So, um Ryan, let's go to you. Haven't heard from you in a minute. Who, who's the guy uh, you're looking at in this class that uh, that you want to highlight first? I mean, Sean, would, you would agree that it's Malik Washington and everybody else, right? Okay. I, I'll, I'll take it from there. Just want to make sure we're on the same page. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, I mean, the Art Bishop Spalding quarterback, I mean, he's he's held an offer from Penn State for a while now. Uh, he's camped, I believe, twice. Uh, I don't know how many times he's been on campus now. Probably four, five, six times. Uh, excuse me, seven times when I look at our profile. And for the record, I mean, we have seven Penn State visits, one to Rutgers, one to Virginia Tech. I'm sure we're, we're maybe missing one or two, but I think that kind of lays the land there of when it comes to who's that top guy, who's consistently coming, and, and, and who's – uh, obviously high on Yurchich's list. So to me, he's kind of the guy I have circled right now is as the one that I feel like the staff's going all in on. Uh, I'm actually planning to go see him uh, play Imitep here um, in, in a couple weeks. So I'm really excited to, to check out that game and, and see what he's able to do against uh, Kenny Wellesley and, you know, obviously a, a very talented um, Imitep uh, defense there. So let's keep an eye on, on him. I mean, Sean, there's a lot of other guys there that – you know, they're on the board right now. Are they going to be on the board later on? I mean, to me, Blake Hebert and Luke Nickel were the kind of the guys I was watching is, you know, consistently have visited Penn State. Seems to be some interest. Uh, Nickel ends up committing to Miami. And then uh, Luke, obviously, he committed – or, excuse me, Blake committed to uh, uh, Clemson, uh, which, was, which was back in June. Uh, I feel like more offers are going to go out here, right? Would you, would you agree with that, Sean? It feels inevitable that we're, we see more 2025 offers here in the next two months. Absolutely. Um, I mean, you've got uh, you've got the normal, not spray offers, but like the everybody offers Bryce Underwood. Everybody offers George McIntyre, who all things equal would probably be the top guy. Like this dude's awesome. kid's really good. Um, but you know, depends. The chances of getting those guys are tough. I will say that the twenty twenty five um, the twenty twenty five class will be watching probably drew Aller's progression more than anything so if you if you get a chance maybe get a boost out of that that's that's one thing so maybe catch the attention of some other people carter smith has been up uh from florida he's a really good athlete um a good quarterback as well so you've got guys that are there that have connections some of them have visited underwood's been on campus smith's been on campus malik washington's been on campus a bunch i, I would go right there with you ryan and side with malik washington I wasn't sure what the expectations were in terms of what he brings to the table in terms of long-term projections and things like that. Because when you offer these guys as young kids, you have no idea how which direction they're going to go. Some of these guys, again, are going to uh, level out. I don't think Malik Washington is there. Like, I think he's a really good player. We saw him at the State College Elite 11, and he was fantastic. Like, he was – Blake Hebert was there, who's committed to Clemson. I mean, I'll, I'll take Washington – 10 out of 10 times on that one. Like that, that was, that's how good he was at the elite 11. So it'd be really good to see um, how these guys progress and how that board sort of ebbs and flows. Again, they're, they're going into their junior year. Junior film is going to be paramount for these guys, but I think Malik Washington has put himself in position to be that guy to circle right now. Like you never know what's going to happen yeah. in six months, but right now I, I circled Malik Washington as a guy to, to follow. Didn't get up to camp this summer. Didn't get up to, to campus at all this summer. I don't believe. Um, but I don't think he went anywhere. So uh, I think he's locked in focus on his team. And uh, yeah, I think we'll be talking about him for a long, long time. Again, I, I said Carter Smith, I think he's going to be back for a game as well. So you've got options there and this is going to be something where Mike Yersich is going to just continue to evaluate and continue to evaluate every week and then it's it's something that we probably will reconvene and talk about later in the season something i wanted to mention at the beginning of the show in our news and notes section uh these guys have already done a great job ryan has been tracking guys that are com uh, committed to coming up to games this uh fall 
including some of the guys we're going to be talking about in just a little bit. Another reason to go to BlueWhiteIllustrated.com. Ryan, how does that work in terms of uh, getting guys up to games? Obviously, it has to work with their schedule, but in terms of, did it, is it like, we'll have somebody for November, and we'll, you know, that's when he can come, so we'll schedule him and make sure that he's on the list for then? Or is it kind of the, they start with the first month and then they go from there? It's the 2025 class. It's just whenever you can get them it's for the okay. most part, right? I mean, you know, when we're talking 2024, guys, it's a little more selective. Have you taken an official visit? Have you not? Um, you know, there's there's other things that go into it. We, we can talk about that on another podcast another day on, on how they do the, the current class. But for 2025 and 2026 and all that, you know, it's really just about kind of getting guys when they can. You know, a lot of guys play Saturday games. Uh, for example, there's there's a school from California coming out here to play St. Francis. Penn State's trying to work on getting guys up um, from that school to, to come for a game while they're on the East Coast. There's, it's, it's really just kind of works out with schedules, though. What's best for the families? I mean, it's not the ball's not really in Penn State's court. It's it's <laughs> it's all about when mom and dad can make the four or five hour drive and, you know, sometimes yeah. 10 hours round trip uh to to take in a penn state game so that's really mainly all it is down the high school schedule what fits mom and dad's schedule and then um you know obviously other schools and and, and they're trying to get players on campus as well one last thing to wrap up the quarterbacks before we move on and i'm just going to use this as an example because mike yersich mentioned this i, I believe it was recently might have been on the adam and brenneman podcast or talking at media day not all throws are created equal and when you're looking scouting guys you want to see guys that make those throws that make you sit up and watch. And Malik Washington has some of these throws. I'm talking about throws that beat coverage, not necessarily they're wide open and you make them. Some of these throws on film, uh, I got my first chance to watch him today uh, when I was recording these for the show. Uh, and the first two throws here on his highlight film, they made my eyes go wide and go, wow, okay, that's a, that's a Mike Yersich quarterback because you're looking at guys that make you know, defining type of throws. Penn State already has a commit in the class of 2025 at running back. Keandre Barker has been committed to the program, um, but it's a deep list of names. So uh, Fitz, where do you want to go with this particular group of players? And is Penn State going to continue to get these high-level athletes at running back and continue this uh, this train that, that Jay Monsider has running down the tracks? I would like to start with Keandre Parker if I can, because this kid is really talented. I'm really interested to see how he does when he starts playing in Texas. He's from Arkansas, transferred to the Woodlands in Texas, and he's going to have an opportunity to to shine against some really top competition. So putting that aside, he's been great with Penn State. Like he he you think he's a couple thousand or I don't know, not a directions guy, but he's 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 a long way away from Penn State, but his commitment seems strong. And it's given Penn State the opportunity. Jay Wan Sider has the opportunity to be selective. And, and he's selective to begin with. I mean, you think about the guys that are in this class, in this 2024 class. Um, they took, obviously, Quentin Martin and Corey Smith. But, like, there's a bunch of guys that, that pop up as guys that could potentially, I don't want to say flip a switch and be Penn, go to Penn State, but, like, uh, Stacey Gage and uh, the uh, Duke, uh, Duke Watson. You know, th these guys that, you know, were seemingly close to commitments at one point. But they took Martin, they took Smith, and that's where they're at. I can see a similar thing like that with, with 25. He has the chance to be selective, and there's some really good backs in the region in this class of uh, 2025. But at the same time, he's got he's got no there, – there's no reason to take one right now. Like, you don't have to press for one right now. Um, I will say I love Bo Jackson in Ohio. Like, he's really, really good. Um, I think he's going to go to Ohio State, even though Ohio State, you know, is, is recruiting the position really well also. Um, but uh, he's he's a good player, strong player would be, you know, kind of similar to Barker in, in some regards, but he's a really good player. Um, Iverson Howard at Quince Orchard is a teammate of Jalen Harvey. He's a really good player. Um, Bud Combs at DeMatha. I think his sister goes here. You know, they, they've got a bunch of really good guys. John Forrester. I just keep railing off these names of, of regional guys. Ty Kays at Aliquippa. Like they just keep popping in my head because they're so prominent and they're still just going into their junior year. So some really good backs out there that give Sider the opportunity to decide who the elite guys are on his board and then press harder with Barker on, on, uh, on the commit list that gives him the opportunity to, uh, to, to just narrow that focus even more. So I think that's good. 
Um, he's going to go national. Waltez Clark was just on campus in July. Uh, Jabri Wallace Coleman's at Imitep is is committed to Georgia, so you know you can keep plugging away there and and say maybe maybe get him on campus for a game. Um, so he's just got so many opportunities because he has that guy in in the twenty twenty five class that he took early that he really likes. Um, but man, this is a, this is an opportunity where you look at. Penn State's recruiting across the board in 2025 and think, yeah, they're, they're going to get somebody at running back, and it's going to be a really, really good player. And there's going to be guys that they have to turn down as well because you, the guys you rattled off, and I, I should say that they turned down, they have, they might have to turn down if, if all things work out in Penn State's favor. That might go to other schools, and you go, wow, why didn't Penn State recruit that guy? There's, uh, You mentioned uh, the guys in the region. I did want to give you credit here because you weren't far off with your 1,000 miles away. Keandre Barker, according to the On3 recruiting uh, page, if you want to check out his On3 recruiting page, 859 miles away from State College. So you round up to me, what's extra, an extra 200 miles? That's, that's, uh, that's about 1,000. So we covered running back. Ryan, if, if there's anything you want to chip in there at the end on running back, go ahead. But we can also transition then to receiver, and uh, you can highlight some guys that you think stand out from the group there. Uh, Walt says Clark's an interesting one that I wanted to learn more about. He was just on campus here. At the end of July. So he's a guy I've been trying to get in touch with, uh, but he looks like a very special player. And uh, there's a there's a good relationship there uh, with Cider. So I, Another somebody keep an eye on, that, you know, right? he's from Tampa, uh, plays at Plant. Plant's been a, a very good school in that area for a long time. And, and you know, Clark's a special player. There, a lot of people speak very highly of him. Uh, aside from that, I, I think Sean pretty much hit on it all. Bud Coombs is interesting just because his sister plays softball here at Penn State. Uh, Sean mentioned she was up to school. She's, she's an athlete as well. And, uh, you know, Iverson Howard has always spoken very highly of Penn State as well. Another Quinn Sorcher guy who Penn State has the, uh, you know, good foot in the door at that school. But, but Barker, man, it's – Sean, it, and we, we were talking about this the other day. If you would have told me uh, that Barker was maybe their most firm 2025 commit when, uh, when he committed, I, I would have been, been, been kind of surprised by that. But he's been excellent with them, very good relationship with Cider. And, uh, you know, I actually spoke with Barker the other day. He's planning to be here – for the whiteout game. So something to keep an eye on. Uh, and by the way, not to put a damper on on three's profiles, but Google Maps says it's 1500 miles away. So yeah, I think he's, I think that <laughs> Arkansas might be the 879 because he's from That's Arkansas. True. You know, he's originally from yeah. Arkansas. And yeah. I don't know what numbers you're going to throw out there, but there ain't no direct route from the Woodlands to State College. Like no. I know we've got a guy in the, in the chat who is, he lives in the Woodlands. I, and he's, yep. I think he's mentioned how tough it is to get to State College. So that's good. I mean, good in the sense that he's going to get up for the whiteout game. And uh, those those visits, they won't be as often as some of those re regional guys, but uh, they will be impactful for things like the whiteout. Did we mention yeah. Jordan Davison? I don't, I don't, I don't know so. if we did. Not that the modern day, just just somebody I, I do. I think he's going to end up at Penn State. No, he has been here before. I do think he will get back for a game this year. I mean, Davidson's one of the top five running backs in the country. Uh, I did an interview with him after his last visit, and he talked about how he actually trained uh, with Journey Brown when he was out in California. So just another name. No, again, do I think uh, Kiefer modern day is going to end up at Penn State? I think it's going to be very difficult to make that happen. But, uh, you know, they are in the mix with him. Yeah, we talk about Penn State not being able to recruit national on the whole. There are certain positions where they can recruit national. And running back is one of them. California might be a bit of a stretch, but like they, they got a guy from Texas. Obviously, Jaywan Lakes is Florida boys, so like they they have been able to, in on some levels, recruit nationally at running back just because of the way that they've done. And by the way, the um, I don't know if you heard this, or not the the two starters that they have right now. That that I think guys want to follow in those footsteps: Nick Singleton and Katron Allen. I think that's yeah. a pretty good sell job for twenty twenty five running backs. Yeah, I mean, Keandre Barker talked about it. The reason he wants to go to Penn State is Saquon Barkley. So, like, the reasons in Penn State's reputation running back is incredibly impressive. Even if it does predate Cider with Barkley, like, that, I think that's a great point. But speaking of modern day, uh, the dude who I went, wow, this morning when I was watching the film, Marcus Harris. Ye yes, please. I, this is a fun football player to watch. Um, again, modern day. Uh, I've, who, who was it of you two that talked to him, uh, about his, uh, visit to Penn state? I, I forget that. Ryan, yeah, it was you? me. Um, okay. yeah, he, he's planning. So, I mean, I mentioned it kind of earlier, uh, modern day plays St. Francis in Baltimore the same weekend as the Iowa game. So, uh, it's too, I mean, it's, it's a little too early to say, absolutely. You know, uh, player X and player Y and player Z are going to be there, but, but Marcus is, is, you know, hopeful and, and planning to be there. Yeah. It's, when a whole team comes across the country, it, it's kind of like a everybody's in on that, right? I mean, it's I don't 
think too many guys. I mean, some guys may stay back and the team goes back, but it's, I, I'm sure they have to kind of sort out some things there yet. I don't want to put all the chips in and say he's absolutely going to be here. But, I mean, he's he's certainly hopeful and, and planning to be here for that. And then, obviously, Jordan Davison is his teammate, and that's that's another guy we're going to be keeping a, a very close eye on. But, but yeah, Marcus Harris, uh, I would have him maybe as their, their top receiver target, but he's pretty much everybody's top receiver target. Yeah. We're talking about a top 50 player here. Uh, I mean, he's all four sites have him as a top 100 prospect. I think, I think that says a lot, you know, the individual numbers or, or whatever at this stage, but if everybody has him that high, it, it tells you what kind of a player he is. Uh, in my eyes, I would have Michael Thomas up there as well. The, the New Jersey prospect uh, wrote about him this past week as well, but this is another big board uh, with a lot of different names. You have Des Jones out in New Jersey. You have Lex Cyrus uh, at Susquehanna here in Harrisburg. Um, Carlton Preston's a player we've talked about a little bit. Goes by Juju, uh, Larry Samuel, Quincy Porter. I mean, Sean, we, we I'll throw it to you. Just anybody individual that you want to talk about. It's a big board. I don't have anyone right now that I'm like, okay, uh, I think he's kind of leaning Penn State's direction, or I'm writing this guy off. Uh, I think by November we'll have a better feel for that. Yeah, I think this is a big junior film type position, really, like to see how these guys adjust to maybe some of them still growing into their bodies, maybe still some of them, you know, getting faster. I look at Lyric Samuel um, from New York, and he's been a guy, I think he camped three times this year, including a team camp. Uh, it was mm -hmm. mini camp was at the Lash Bash. Um, I think if he has the opportunity, like, to, to make it happen. And, and we've got him at six, five, he's about six, three plus, which is still, you know, fantastic. Six, yeah. three plus runs a four five that there's not too, too many of those guys in, in the 2025 class right now. So he's got that athletic upside that we look for. He's not just a regional guy that has put up good numbers and Penn state offer just to, to offer. I think he's a guy that could emerge as a, you know, as a four-star guy at some point. Um, the slot guys are good, very good in the region. Like they, I know that they, the, those guys te seem to, come on the radar a little bit earlier because they've got the better body control. You know, it's easier when you're a smaller guy to, uh, to, to excel early in the high school game. But Des Jones from New Jersey is supposed to been out a couple of times. You mentioned Lex Cyrus from Susquehanna Township. That's a really intriguing one to me because we both saw him at camp and he blew it. He blew everybody away at camp. Um, fast guy, four, three guy, I think, uh, at camp state champ, State champ in the it was, it was a state or district champ in the hundred. You know he's just got he's got legitimate speed like that that you don't find very often. Not a very big guy, but most of these slot guys aren't. Uh, Lotsier Brooks as well. We've been hearing about Lotsier Brooks since he was I think an eighth grader, maybe a, a early in his ninth grade year in South Jersey. So very good slot receiver targets in the in the region. But as as I said, this position maybe more than any you get a chance to evaluate, you get a chance to see what's out there and, and, and see how they come along in their junior season. So like, yes, there's a lot of names on the board receivers, a dime a dozen position in terms of recruiting, like that, that's how they come at, That's how they come out. Then you just have to separate which ones are the legitimate targets, which ones are the, the, the guys that you think can be elite and play in your room. Yeah. Just, uh, like for record, Lex ran that 10, six, seven at uh state champion this year, one to three a, and uh, I'm planning to go see him on Saturday. Uh, Susquehanna mm -hmm. has their first scrimmage of the year. Lex is not a talker. So I'll, I'll be curious uh, to, to see uh, just kind of how his recruitment's going. Because I don't – have you seen a Lex Cyrus interview anywhere? I haven't I seen haven't many. Seen him talk to anybody. It would be funny if he stones you when you get out there and, uh, you know, <laughs> pulls the old Katron Allen. So, no, I mean, it's uh, – it, it, he's one of those guys that in the mid state, you hear all about the 2026 guys and things like that. But like the 2025s are, you know, there's some good ones in there. And like Cyrus surprised us, I would say surprised us at camp in a good way in terms of what he brings to the table as a receiver, not just as a speed guy. Stephen light here, uh, dropping us a, 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 uh, uh, super chat. Almost forgot there for a second. As always with Steven regular here on the show. Thanks for the, the donation. Thanks for the kind words. Uh, tip jar is always open if you want to drop those in, but you don't have to. We're talking to you in the chat as well. The question about receiver. Um, I know that we just, just just laid it out. A lot of this is going to be determined by junior film and how this class kind of grows and, and the board grows and shapes over time. How much are you looking at Marcus Hagens and his impact on uh, this class and the end of 2024, like where, where do you gauge his impact and how he can really like make a connection and, and start to do what he can do as a recruiter? Do you look at the end of 24 or are you looking at 25 as really his first full cycle as the main guy at the position? Uh, Ryan, do you have any thoughts on that? Um, 
I don't think there's much of a difference. Do you, Sean? I mean, I think it's yeah. Just use both. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, every 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 player's different. A full cycle of 24, but yeah. you know, even even so, like he's got an opportunity to you know get on his own guys, and you know, when you come into a job, there are already guys on the board that you're looking at. But then again, you know, we weren't talking about Peter Gonzalez much. I know he had the offer and everything like that, but like this, he got a chance to evaluate. So use both. I mean, I don't know why we'd have to go with one way or the other, but this is an opportunity for him to maybe get in a little bit earlier. The thing that's different for him is that you look at a lot of these 2025 20, guys that are on the radar and they very well may not be on the radar in six months, but at Penn state, you're getting these guys on campus at Virginia. You're trying to convince these guys to get to campus. So like he didn't have lyric Samuel camp for him three times at Virginia. So that, that I think that's the change. When you change that badge, it changes a lot when you're going from Penn state to Virginia. So he has an opportunity to get in there earlier to get uh, the, the, um, the infrastructure of the recruiting team uh, to, to, to dial up these relationships. So he has a better opportunity at Penn state to essentially be a better recruiter. And, and a lot of that comes with it. So I think that that's what helps him with this 2025 class that he didn't have last spring and summer to uh, the, or the previous, the 2022 spring and summer to get to know some of these 2024 guys. August is the time for everything happening. You know, the fall, literally everything happens in America in the fall. Um, summer is officially over. Ryan is going to high school games. There's, there's NFL preseason games on, on TV. We're going to be getting to college here in just a little bit. And for somebody like me that has extreme FOMO, Missing some of these things is the worst thing that could possibly happen. So if you have stress in your life and you feel like everything's happening all at once and you feel like any of those things, how do you manage all that stuff? And, and for me, a lot of the, these things show up in my sleep. I don't sleep very well. This week has been garbage for sleep. If you saw me on the Keystone kickoff show yesterday, my eyes were all puffy because I woke up like 30 minutes before the show because I didn't sleep at all the night before. Well, I fixed that. I, I took some of the THC gummies from RogueShop.com. I slept well last night. I look like a human again and not a zombie. So if you've got stress, anxiety, uh, pain, chronic pain can be one of the worst things that uh, you can deal with on a regular basis. And uh, chronic inflammation, another thing that I'm, I'm a big proponent of because disease and a lot of diseases, they come with inflammation. Inflammation is one of the worst things that can happen to your body long term. Well, CBD oil can help with inflammation and reduce inflammation. And RogueShop.com, they are a small batch cannabis store uh, dedicated to holistic medicine, ways that you can help heal your body through natural plant products uh, from, uh, from you know, THC and CBD and all the different deltas with uh, their gummies. The gummies are what I use, but they've got a d bunch of different ways that you can ingest all of these things. If you're more comfortable uh, with a lollipop or with uh, a tincture or different ways like that, you can check out rogueshop.com. Use promo code BWI. Always forget to put this up here because this is the main thing. Use promo code BWI. Because first off, that lets you know they're coming from us. Secondly, you get 10% off your first purchase. So go to rogueshop.com. Always appreciate them supporting the show and supporting my ability to fall asleep at night. So thanks again to Rogue Shop. We got two more positions that we need to clean up here at the end of the show. Uh, with tight end, Penn State doing very well at tight end. And then offensive line, Penn State doing very well at offensive line. Fitz, can they continue that? At, uh, let's start with tight end. That's good. We'll, we'll finish up with the O-linemen. Can they continue this run that they've had with Ty Howell doing very well getting in some top targets at that position in 2025? And, and who are we looking at? A lot of the things that I said about running back couldn't be repeated here for tight end. Like they have the opportunity to be selective. They have the opportunity to be national if they want to be national. Penn State's tight end recruiting is just on another level than most positions. So and it, and it shows on the field. So like I think that's that's one thing. Ty Howell will go out and identify these guys and. You know, Ty Howell's a good recruiter. He doesn't have the national cachet that a lot of uh, recruit or a lot of coaches will have coming in and recruiting this position. Um, but like he, he can be effective and he can get it done. He can also expand those parameters in terms of guys that he wants to check out. I think James Flanagan really, really high on the board. And it's it's going to be tough to get him away from Notre Dame. He's a Notre Dame legacy. They just had a spot open up with Nate Roberts stepping back from his commitment. Um, those two guys are probably top five tight ends in the class of 2025. And, and Nate Roberts is on Penn State's board as well. Um, so like this is kind of what we're seeing. There's a, there's a handful of schools that are in that mix uh, to, as as elite tight end recruiters. And Notre Dame and Penn State are always fighting it out. I mean, you look back a couple of years ago, 
that was the top two for Michael Mayer. You know, I know that there was a bunch of other really, really good tight ends that have, you know, gone to Notre Dame, gone to Penn State. And the other option was the the, the opposing school there. Um, so this is something that you look at with uh, sort of the continuity of the position, regardless of who's coaching it, Tyler Bowen, Ty Howell, uh, the staff at Notre Dame, the, the previous staff at Notre Dame, um, they have that opportunity. So James Flanagan and Nate Roberts, two of those guys that you're looking at as national guys, and they're going to continue to look all over the place. I mean, you remember uh, this year, uh, they, they, I think the Georgia, uh, Nebraska, just all over the place in terms of guys that were legitimately is- interested. Some took official visits, some you know were scheduled for official visits. They went with Luke Reynolds because they love what they had with Luke Reynolds, and it appears they made a really good choice in taking Luke Reynolds. So um, it, it's just it's just, it's the same thing. You've got the opportunity to be selective, and Penn State's going to do that. I will say Brady O'Hara is an interesting one from Pennsylvania. Um, you know, he's a, a really intriguing athlete, big kid, uh, what, six, six, two, six, or excuse me, 240 right now. Um, so he's got the opportunity to continue to grow. Um, and I think that, that you, that's an opportunity for Penn state to, you know, if you're going to take two, uh, or Brady O'Hara can, can be a defensive lineman, can eventually be an offensive lineman if you want to, he gives you that flexibility there. And he's a good enough athlete where he's an in-state guy. I don't think that's a guy that you turn away. So I know that there have been some picks um, for Brady O'Hara. I wanted to see if he was a tight end at that level, but I think Penn State would take him. So I think that makes sense in terms of, uh, of that all coming together. So gives Penn State an opportunity to continue to replenish that room. As I've said before, that's a really good room, man. Like you're talking about Khalil Dinkins as your number three and Andrew Rappelier and Jerry Cross as your four and five. Like they're not, they're not down on that list because they're bad players. They're down on that list because Penn State's really good at tight ends. So anxious to see how this, how how long they can ride this wave per se. Like there's there's a real opportunity for them to continue to stockpile this position. If you get a guy like Flanagan, that's great. But I think they're, I think it's, it seems like uh, maybe a little bit lazy. It seems like a little bit of falling into this this trap. But they're gonna get a good tight end. Like that's what they do. That's what they've <laughs> yeah. done, and that's what they will continue to do. And they, they have the ability with the way that the offense has functioned with Mike Yersich and kind of this evolution they've had with their two tight end systems that they can take different body types too. Khalil Dinkins is not the same thing as, uh, you know, a Pat Fryermuth or a Theo Johnson. So they, they have the ability to adapt it and put guys into position to succeed. And that tight end position of just jumbo athletes, getting a bunch of those on the field is, is obviously a good thing. Ryan, always want to give you a chance to give your thoughts on something, but uh, offensive line, there's a long list of guys want to get to that before the end of the show as well. So any thoughts on tight end and then kick us off with the offensive lineman? Yeah, Sean pretty much hit on it. I mean, Logan Brooking was another guy that uh, I know wanted to visit Penn State in July. Another solid tight end prospect, uh, potential four-star guy uh, out of Georgia. He didn't. He wasn't able to make it up. Uh, he was a guy trying to visit for uh, the Lash Bash. Wasn't able to make it, but there's certainly a good enough relationship there why I wouldn't be shocked if he visits uh, during the season. So keep an eye on him. Uh, yeah, but O-line, man, it's it's a, another deep area. I mean, look, uh, Trout's doing a great job there. Uh, let's see if they, if they can continue that. But there's plenty of talent. Obviously, Jalen Matthews is committed. I think there's, it's the only place we can start, right? And his – how firm is Jalen Matthews? You know, time will tell. He's he's absolutely going to visit other schools. Uh, I was going through his Twitter feed the other day. There's more mentions of other schools than Penn State uh, since, I don't know, June or so. So uh, I wouldn't really consider it a firm commitment at this time. Uh, but, uh, you know, there's, there's obviously a good enough relationship there. And, and Penn State's going to be in the mix throughout. But he's going to have all, all the top SEC schools pushing for him. He already does have all the SEC schools pushing for him. So let's see where all he visits this fall and, and, and how that, uh, you know, how that impacts his recruitment. But this is going to be one of those guys that uh, I think we're talking about uh, with other visits and things like that. And I'm not going to say drama, but there's, this is far from a, a firm commitment right now. Right. Yeah. George the is then definitely on one that, that uh, you have to look out for um, with, uh, with Matthews. I know Fran Brown has made him a priority. Um, so he'll, I would imagine get down there um, for a game this fall. Um, that's going to be tough, man. Like this, uh, as we said, sometimes guys commit really early and it's, and it's worse than, than dragging it out. So uh, I'll be interested to see where Matthews is, um, you know, in a couple of months from now. Um, again, it, says the right things, does the right things, um, but it's it's not really something that I would call super solid right now. Yeah, one of those, um, what uh, you're, 
Oh my goodness, my brain just uh, <laughs> my brain just malfunctioned. Uh, what you say is different than what you do, and what he's doing is very different than the words he's saying as what you you guys are saying. So, it, it, but he didn't he didn't pop up anywhere in the summer, so that that's mm-hmm. encouraging. I guess you could take away from that. But he's going to go to games, like he's going to check out some really probably really good games this uh, this fall. So the guys in region, though, there are some pretty talented players. We've got to see them up close and personal. Fitz, you got to see a bunch of them up close and, and personal at Penn State's uh, whiteout camp. So who do you want to talk about when we talk about other offensive tackles? I think that's a good place to start with guys on the outside. Can Penn State kind of get rolling here with offensive tackle? And who are the guys that you're targeting so far in 2025? Well, as I mentioned with slot receivers and regular receivers, the the interior guys will develop earlier. Like they'll be, it'll be easier to play at that size and things like that. But um, so, so tackle is probably something like we weren't talking about Garrett Sexton. We weren't talking about Garrett Sexton in this winter. Like, uh, you know, that's where we kind of were with, uh, with all that. So, um, but they had a couple of guys at the whiteout camp. Owen Alessini is a really good player. Like he, he looked the part in terms of going against Penn state's commits and things like that. Did a pretty good job uh, sitting there. Will Black was also at that camp. Um, Matty Augustine is a really good looking prospect. And I, I know that some of these um, 2025 guys in, in the Northeast in new England, a little bit old, like an, maybe a class older than, than the rest of their class. But uh, yeah, Augustine's an, another guy to watch a guy that's been on campus a couple of times. Um, it, it's interesting, but it, you know, I'm not certain that Penn state ends up here, but uh, Nikolai Brooks from Georgia has been up a couple of times. He came up with, uh, with Brandon Jacobs son, um, the, he's absolutely massive, just absolutely one of the biggest prospects that Penn state will recruit in the class of 2025. Um, but he's originally from Iowa top three, Iowa, Penn state, Alabama, natural top three, everybody's top three, obviously. Um, but, um, it, it seems he took a step back. I think he was going to, he was either going to transfer or did transfer to Iowa he did, um, Sean. back home to Iowa to play. Um, so he's, he's got the opportunity to see the Hawkeyes a little bit more. Um, and I think he stepped back from a commitment from Iowa, if we're, if we're honest here. Um, but Penn state wants to get him back on campus. He is absolutely huge. Ryan, you, you want to follow up on yeah, that? Yeah, I apologize. I shouldn't talk over that show. He did, Sean. He, he is back in, uh, in Iowa now. So, uh, we'll see. Uh, most people expect him to end up at Iowa. He hasn't committed yet. So we'll, we'll see, but man, he is, uh, he's he's up there as far as uh, top targets for for Penn State's offensive tackle board, no doubt. I really like Will Black. Uh, I I just from hearing about how he tested at Penn State and you know, obviously originally from Canada. We're going to learn a lot about him this year, but just from a yeah. measurable perspective and what he brings, a lot of potential there with Will Black. Um, was it? I, I got corrected last time. I remember I couldn't pronounce the school. It's Choate Rosemary uh, Hall. He's uh, that's where he's at in, in New England now. But certainly a guy to keep an eye on. And then there's Great a deep uh, yeah. There's a deep interior group too. Then what you have Michael Carroll, you have Joshua Williams, uh, two guys from PA that I think, uh, again, early, but certainly guys, a circle that, you know, out of all these players we've been talking about right now, like these two, I'm not going to say, I'm not putting in early picks for them, but like, Oh, they make sense to end up at Penn state. Uh, Carroll of course, uh, has ties to the school with his dad. And then, uh, you know, Williams was just up for camp and, and, you know, plans to be here for uh, some of the early games this year. So keep an eye on those two. I, I could see, I could certainly see Carroll being, uh, you know, maybe not the next 2025 player to commit, but one of those next couple of handful of guys, you know, maybe later this year or early in 2024, we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens there, but he's, uh, he's Carroll, gotten, they like a lot. Williams, they yeah, like a lot. Sorry. John, he's go gotten so much better, man. Like in the mm-hmm. last year, just, I know growing two inches helps. He's just in terms of technique, in terms of those things. Sometimes when those interior guys are on the on the radar very early, they cap out. Like we look at a, there's a couple of guys in state that are or, or in the region that are really good players, but are going to cap out at six two. Like you know maybe they look like they were going to be six five at one point. It just doesn't happen sometimes. Um, but Carroll's a guy that's really come a long way in the last year. Just an invisible improvement. Like sometimes you don't get that, but like he was a guy that was a dude at camp this year where he was not at camp last year. He might have been one of the top two offensive linemen during the drills you saw there in the, in the highlight video. One of the top two in both of the instances where he's at Penn State's camp, and their committed players are on on uh, on site as well. So that's a really impressive thing. I again, I I put him with the 2024 guys when we were making highlight videos this summer. So uh, fits. I couldn't agree more in terms of like how good he's been and and that improvement you're talking about from last year, this year Um, we covered all the names, but just generally, do you feel confident about this group as an offensive Mm -hmm. lineman where 
of offensive linemen where Penn State can uh, get where they need to with the offensive line class. And secondarily, Will Black, uh, Owen Alcini, not the biggest guys in the world right now when you look at Jalen Matthews or some of the other guys you're talking about. Uh, does that concern you at all that Penn State getting all these guys that are kind of developmental, six foot seven, but you know, going back to Sexton and Boyer, really tall guys that need to fill out. Do you, do you think that, that there's any concern or getting over the hump of getting guys that have the proven size and the proven uh, physicality of the position that you'd like to see Penn State land in 25? Or is that not anything that matters at all? No, give me the athletes. Give me the guys that can move over the guys that are, you know, going to be at 310 pounds when they step on campus. I mean, Alicina is six on oh, nearly six, eight, two, seven. So black. Yeah. 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 He's yeah, they're fine. both six, seven guys. No, no, What's no that? issues with, with size on those two. Uh, they're, they're up there. Yeah, we didn't mention Hardy, Hardy Watts either. Six, seven and a half, three fifty. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. there's your yeah. Side. <laughs> Hardy, Hardy Watts stuff. too. Keep an eye on him. Dexter school, uh, teammates with Liam Andrews. I don't think we mentioned him. I think he's going to be more of an interior guy. He's six, five, but so. kind of seems like they like him more interior. Uh, we didn't mention him, but he was up for the lash bash as well. Uh, another guy that, uh, you know, again, Liam's here. There's a relationship there. Certainly someone that I, I could potentially see visiting multiple times and having Penn State top three or so. And, and I don't want to say they're there yet, but they can be a little bit more selective in terms of body types with the way that they've recruited over the last couple of, of cycles. Uh, the big guys in 2023 currently are absolutely long, huge tackle, like tackle tackles. Like the Javen Williams could be a swing guy, but these yeah. guys are tackle tackles and gives you an opportunity for a guy like Hardy Watts that's what six four and change or something like that to say he's an interior guy. Um, so it gives them the opportunity to do that and they can continue to do that. And again, tackle is going to be a spot that's going to develop late. You're going to find out these guys that are baby giraffes right now that, you know, are just learning to put their foot in front of them. And then six games into their junior season, they're mauling people. Those are the guys that you yeah. want to find right there as offensive tackles. So um, it's, it's just one of those things. Ongoing evaluations goes back to the first point I made when we started this show 56 minutes ago. Um, it's, uh, it, it's definitely something to remember with these 2025 guys. I know size is very important to fans, and I just just as kind of one of those, it might be a thing, but it also might be a just a coincidence. Kevin Haywood, you know, 290 pound, big, physical, like you know, built tackle, uh, Penn State in the lead commits to Wisconsin. Then you got Jalen Matthews, obviously, and growing into a national prospect as a guy who has that size, and and that's kind of more of what I was talking about in terms of is this a thing or is this not a thing? And I I think it's a very good point that. Penn State's going to put the weight on these guys, and they're going to get the weight on them because they're they're big, physical, uh, you know, potential players. And it just seems like it's kind of setting up the same way where Phil Troutwine has has a type. These guys that have the athleticism to grow into their body, and and they'll put the weight on them instead of guys that are already big in high school. But as always, some things are a thing, some things aren't a thing, and and that's where we're going to end the show. Appreciate you guys. Uh, going through all of this and, and giving fans a preview of 2025 early names to know. And uh, in six months, half of them will be learning some new names guys. Thank you so much for that. And uh, we'll be back. Blue white illustrated.com is where you got more information on these guys, but we'll be back on Monday with part two. And that is going to be the defensive guys. Who are the guys that uh, Manny Diaz's side of the ball is targeting and, uh, and can Penn state, Go three deep at, at positions where they're bringing in so much talent. I'm Thomas Frank Carr, Sean Fitz, and Ryan Snyder with us. We will talk to you again on Monday.